In this presentation, we're going to discuss ethical decision-making in organizations. We'll pay special attention to the ASPA Code of Ethics, the qualities of public a public administrator needs to avoid unethical behavior, and the dynamics of political corruption. Defining what is ethical behavior can be difficult. There is no one agreed upon definition of ethical behavior, but there are some general guidelines that apply to most public servants. We're going to talk about some of those general guidelines. Uh, the ASPA, uh, American Society for Public Administration, organization formally adopted a code of ethics applicable to the official conduct of administrators in virtually all settings. Additionally, uh, political scientist Stephen K. Bailey suggests that public servants need to have certain moral qualities and certain attitudes to behave ethically in public service. Before diving into the ASPA Code of Ethics, let's consider the attitudes and moral qualities Bailey argues that public servants need uh, to be ethical decision makers. Bailey argues that administrators need awareness of the moral ambiguity in decision making. Public administrators need to understand that what is right and what is wrong is not always clear and that there will be times when uh, they are put into situations where making the arguably ethical decision is difficult. They also need an appreciation of the contextual forces at play in decision making. Public administrators off, are often making decisions in, the context, in context where uh, there are various stakeholders in the community and pleasing them all or doing what all of them think is right is not always possible. Public administrators also need a conception of the paradox of procedures, which is an understanding of the need for orderly and rational procedures balanced against uh, an understanding that procedures, often referred to as red tape, can sometimes be uh, uh, an obstacle to responsiveness and public accountability. Let's take a moment to unpack the paradox of procedures. We often think of red tape, uh, the policies and procedures in place within organizations, negatively. Red tape is what we experience when we need uh, to fill out an excessive number of forms to get a driver's license, or an excessive number of forms to get a permit to build a structure on our own property. The public administrator needs to understand that there is this paradox of procedures. Administrators need to balance the need for red tape, which assures us that citizens are treated equally and arguably cuts down on corruption, with the negative consequences of red tape, which can lead to a lack of responsiveness to the needs of the public. The moral qualities that Bailey argues are needed uh, include optimism, including a willingness to take risks, courage, including the courage to avoid special favors and uh, make decisions that are unpopular, uh, the ability to make decisions that are unpopular, uh, and charity, which includes being fair and placing uh, principle above personal needs and recognition or power. The American Society for Public Administration, ASPA, formally adopted a code of ethics in the mid-1980s and has revised the code on several occasions since. There are some key principles in the code, which include that public administrators should serve the public beyond serving oneself, uh, that they should conduct themselves in a manner that inspires uh, public confidence and trust, that they should work to strengthen or organizational capabilities to apply ethics, efficiency, and effectiveness, 
and that they should work to promote the public interest. A formal code of ethics is good for giving public administrators guidance in making tough decisions. The code is concise and reasonably clear, however, it is certainly not above criticism. There is some ambiguity in the code of ethics. For example, public administrators may disagree in specific situations on which decision would advance the public interest. There is also an issue with the code when it comes to conflicting principles. Can a public administrator uphold the Constitution and the law and also fully inform and advise in every situation? Consider cases when law enforcement agencies may be bound by the law in what information they are allowed to share. Sometimes uh, the principles in the code of ethics can conflict and lead to a situation where a public administrator has to choose which principle prevails. The last thing to cover briefly today is political corruption. Political corruption can include all forms of bribery, favoritism, kickbacks, uh, and legal as well as illegal rewards. It is commonly associated with uh, reward systems in which uh, partisan patronage is in use. More generally, it involves uh, patterns of behavior in government uh, associated with providing access, tangible benefits uh, to some more than others. <clears throat> On what is often referred to as an insider basis. According to the standards that the public applies, political corruption is universal in the sense that virtually every political system has its share. We think of corruption as a big city problem, but favoritism certainly exists in rural areas too. It's important to note that though uh, that a lot of what we consider corruption is uh, hard to trace and sometimes overstated. Public surveys often show that we perceive there to be far more corruption than, the, than evidence or investigations show. This certainly does not mean that there is no political corruption at all, but consider the types of things that are often pointed to as examples of corruption. Let's say an elected official takes money from an organization, in this case the Fraternal Order of Police, an organization representing police officers across the United States. Then the same politician, the same elected official, votes in favor of legislation that provides uh, police with protections referred to as the Police Bill of Rights. Some might consider this political corruption, since the elected official has accepted money uh, from a group and then has voted uh, in that group's favor on a piece of legislation. However, this is not enough evidence to make that conclusion. Uh, there is an issue here with causation. If the elected officials voting behavior changed because of the donation from the group, that would be evidence of political corruption uh, and maybe bribery. In this case, that isn't clear. It could be that the Fraternal Order of Police is making a donation to an elected official uh, because that elected official is known to support causes that are favorable to the police. It may be that the elected of official would vote for the Police Bill of Rights regardless of the contribution from the organization. Typically, organizations donate money to politicians that they already support, uh, uh, that, and, and politicians that already support their cause, rather than donating money to politicians in a hope of changing their behavior. The public perception, though, is that when money is exchanged, it's inherently corrupt. So you can see where uh, issues of political corruption are not always clear. In this presentation, we covered ethical decision making, including the attitudes and morals of ethical public administrators, uh, the ASPA code of ethics, and we also covered the dynamics of political corruption.